first of all, with your workload, simulate something like a pull system instead of a push system. And what I mean by that is when you keep track of what you're working on, have a, the top part of that list, which is I'm um, actively working on these things, and keep that top part of your list to like two or three things. Everything else is in the bottom part of the list. It's to work on next, and it's in an ordered queue. And so when you finish something that you're working on, you pull something new to take its slot from the list below, right? So what I'm trying to do with that advice is reduce all this administrative overhead. Because now, even if like you can't get away, you have to say yes to these things because it's the way like your, your organization works. The stuff that's in the waiting to work on queue, you say, I don't have meetings about that. I don't do emails about that. I wait till I'm actively working on it. And I only actively work on three things at a time. Now, I'm going to finish those things really quickly because I don't have... 15 items worth of meetings I'm going to every day. So things are going to pull up there pretty quickly. And so the rate at which I'm accomplishing things will probably be higher than it was before. But I only work on three things actively. You could even make this visible. It's in a shared document if you want to. When someone asks you to do something new, tell them to put it on the end of your queue. You're like, oh, okay. So like Andrew is not working on this right now. He's working on these three things. And there's seven things here. And I'm adding something number eight. So I know not to expect something for a while. Um, in fact, I can keep checking this list until I see Andrew's working on it. So I can see it's making progress. And then once I know he's working on it, I can start emailing him about it. And we can do just the normal type of overhead you would have with, with projects, right? Uh, that alone is going to have a huge difference. Like now the amount of uh, distraction your day is going to uh, plummet. Because that's generated from overhead of things you've agreed to do. And that's going to that's gonna plummet that down. All right. So that'd be number one. Could I just uh, – thank you. Could I just ask a few questions about that just to yeah, clarify? So yeah. for – I'll use myself as an example selfishly. But then, of course, I don't know what everyone else out there is pursuing. But so substitute the specifics I'm about to insert here for whatever it is that you care about in your life. So um, researching podcasts. Yeah. Uh, solo podcast in particular for me is my major task in life these days yeah. uh, with respect to work. So that would be top of the list. Yeah. Um, and then uh, there could be two other items on this, you know, top of queue. Um, would daily activities like like exercise, social time with loved ones, et cetera, would that be included there? Or we're talking specifically about work. Yeah, let's just keep just work. Okay. So yeah. it would be, you know, podcast prep. So you might podcast have the, prep. You might, <laughs> podcast right, prep. You might have the particular topic, though. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, pod, right. I'm working on an episode right now about about skin health. Yeah. Um, so you could you could yeah. have two different episode Got topics. It. You're yep. prepping. Those could both be up there. Yep. So skin health, allergies episode. These are two that I'm spending yeah. a lot of time yeah. on. Um, months. Yeah. Uh, in fact. Yeah. Right. And then your okay. third might be something that, that involves the uh, the media company, something around the business side sure. of it. Like, okay, we're trying to figure out. Um, a plan for whatever. Right. Content yeah. for, for a, a, a new content a brand strategy. association yeah, or something. Exactly. Okay. Got yeah. it. Great. So th those three would be top of the list. And every day until those are done, they could sit top of the list. And then there are a number of items underneath those that fall under whatever. Yeah. And, and critically, when these other items come up, right? Like, oh, this is like a topic, for example, I want to do a show on. You have a place to put it mm -hmm. where it's not being forgotten. Or here's a here's a business idea. Like, we need to figure out like whatever. We want to add, do something with our camera, configure. Okay, put it on the list. So it's not being forgotten. Like it, it's on there and you can see where it is. Not only is it on there, but like this could be shared among your team. So as people had extra information or things to add to one of these projects, they can add it to it on the list, right? So the information is aggregating. So if you use a tool like Trello for this. Trello spelled? T-R-E-L-L-O. Okay, is it an app of it's some a, sort? It's a web-based service that the metaphor is just index cards in piles. Got it. Right, they're, but they're virtual. Okay. Um, but you can flip over the index card digitally, attach files, write notes. And, and so I use Trello for my own organization, what I'm working on. So now you have a place where you can gather like, oh, we just, I just heard about something that's relevant to this thing I need to work on. You have a place to put it. Like it goes onto the Trello card or you could do this with shared documents. doesn't matter. You're just like literally typing things into a Google doc. You know, the, or a whiteboard. Or a whiteboard. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You could be, we're, we're keeping track of these things, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this by the way. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I mean, I'm a big believer in this and then everyone can see what you're working on. Um, and then, uh, the, but the key thing is if it's not in your active list, you don't have meetings about it. And you don't have emails about it, right? Like if people have ideas or things, they just add it to the card. So when that gets up to the active list, we can work on all the information there. We haven't forgotten anything. And what two-word uh, language do you use to describe this first point, this method? I, I love this. I called it a pull-based Pull based, right? What, what gets pulled up? You right. pull into the, so you're fixing in advance. Here's how much concentration I have to give on work, and you pull stuff into that. The alternative is push based. 
which is how most organizations run, which is when I want you to do something, I just push it onto you and now you have to deal with it. Got it. Um, I once heard email described as a public post to-do list. Yeah. That made me scared of email in a way that nothing else had. Yeah. Um, it's Newport's pull-based system. I called it that, by the way. Um, this is what in the a lot of the advice in the first, uh, one of the chapters of the new book mm -hmm. is basically how do you get away with implementing this and when you have a boss and there's like all sorts of different, so you're your own boss. So you can just say, this is what we're doing. Here's the board, but there's a lot of like subtle ways you can sure. do this. Yeah. Um, right. So that's number one. That's number one. The yeah. um, uh, Cal Newport's poll-based system. I'm going to do this and I'm actually going to report back on this at some point. Um, yeah. You won't see the post on social media because you're not there, but others will. All right. So okay. that's one. All right. Okay. Number two would be multi-scale planning. Okay. So now this is planning. Uh, you're planning on three different scales. Daily, weekly, seasonally or quarterly, however you want to think about it, right? So you have a, a, a plan for like the semester, the season, or the quarter. Like this is what I'm working on. These are the big objectives I want to hit. Here's the reminders to myself about like what matters. Like remember, like I'm, I'm overhauling my, my workout routine. We're trying to like do this with the podcast. You look at that scale of planning every week when you build your weekly plan. And the weekly plan, it gives freeform text. You don't need anything, you know, any special tools. Your weekly plan, you're looking at the actual calendar. All right, uh, what for my bigger scale plan, my seasonal quarterly plan, what am I trying to make sure I can make progress on this week? And you, you confront the reality of your week. You see where's the empty space, where there's the busy space. You also change what's on your plate right here. You know, if I cancel this thing, that frees up that whole morning, which means like I could really make progress on this, which I really want to make progress on. So great, I'm going to cancel that thing on Friday. So you're looking at the whole week as one unit. Then every day, you look at your weekly plan. Like, okay, so, so I'm going to use this when I make my plan for the day. And when you do your daily plan, you do time blocking. Now I'm, every, I'm giving a job every minute on my work day. Not my day after work, but every minute of my work day, I'm time blocking. So I call it time blocking because you're literally drawing – blocks around the free time. Okay, this I'm working on this, this I'm working on this. So you're, you're making a plan for your day that is informed by the weekly plan. So in multi-scale planning, you have like the, the big picture things you care about trickle their way all the way down to, okay, I'm, what am I going to do during this hour, during the day? Um, but you don't have to grapple every, this is what most people do. Every time I, I'm figuring out what to do next. I'm not grappling with all these scales at the same time. What are my objectives? What's my big plan? What's going on this week? Uh, you're, you're dealing with each of these scales when the time is right. And so when it finally gets down to it's now three o'clock, you're just doing what that block is. And you figured out that block earlier today when you looked at your weekly plan. That weekly plan reflected what was in your semester plan, which you figured out, you spent a whole afternoon working on at the beginning of the semester. So multi-scale planning, uh, it keeps you focused on what matters. It prevents you from wandering through your day and how you disperse your energy. Um, and it gives you control over your time on different scales from like canceling major ongoing obligations to just being more efficient about what you do during a given day. Uh, so I swear by multi-scale planning to try to keep this whole lumbering ship that is sort of like Cal Newport um, aiming in the, towards the right shores, you know, like keep correcting and keeping it aimed back. I love this. I, this is more or less what I do with my physical workouts. Every week I know I'm going to get three resistance training sessions, yep. two or three cardiovascular training sessions. I know I'm going to train my legs once. It's either going to be on, depending on travel, Sunday, Monday, or Tuesday. I'll train torso muscles in the middle of the week. I'll train sort of um, limb accessory muscles on a Saturday. Yeah. Long run on Sunday or hike on Sunday or some other day, there'll be some sort of hit workout in the middle of the week. And yeah. ideally there's a jog in there too. And you can adjust yeah. it a little bit based on the reality of the week. Yeah. I might yeah. double up yeah. for two days and take a day off. I have my ideal yeah. schedule, but sometimes it gets compromised. And, um, and then I do that for 16 week cycles where I vary the kind of intensity load, et cetera. Um, and I've done this for years and it's just kind of works for me. Yeah. Um, now with cognitive work, I don't tend to do this. It tends to be more deadline based. Yeah. But I think that the, um, the pull based system is really going to help. Yeah. Um, if I dovetail it with this multi-scale planning, um, I love this. And you can see the deadlines now, you see them coming, mm -hmm. right? So that's part of what's nice about multi-scale planning is, you know, the deadlines coming up. And so when you're doing your semester planning, you start thinking like, okay, for the big deadlines, like when I get to December, I need to be really started getting after this thing that's going to be due. Yeah, I've got yeah. a book due. Yeah, so then yeah. you know, and so this really helps me book writing because now when I'm planning, it's like, you know, a year in advance. I know this month, I need to get like roughly the rough draft of chapter two done. 
you know? And then that trickles down to my week where I'm going to make sure I have enough time cleared to like be on track for finishing it. And then that trickles into my day. Now I know to like block those mornings to work on it. So it all, it all works together. An added bonus of the daily scale is I would say communication should get its own block. Email, social media, whatever that's like you communicating with the outside world goes into your time block plan. So if your block doesn't include that, you don't do it. So it's like this block is writing. It's not email. It's not social media. So the rule is really simple. I'm not going to use email or social media, um, but I still need to do email at some point. So I have to put a block in for it. And when I'm in my email blocks, I'm doing the email. If I need to go on social media to see what's going on with like the latest episode or something, I got to give that time. And then you can monofocus because then uh, it's a psychological hack. But basically, um, when you particularly – when you schedule communication and distraction, now the only thing you have to muster willpower to do is obey the single rule of I'm following my blocks. If you don't do that, if you're like, I just sometimes do email and social media, sometimes I don't. Now what you have to do is just constantly be having this debate – is now the right time to do this? I know I'm going to do it at some point today. Why not now? Well, what about now? What about now? Like you're just constantly asking yourself, right? That's impossible, right? That's going to drain you. But if all you have to do instead is say, my commitment today is to follow my blocks. And I get, I really feel good when I do it. And like, I check off a box. If I do give yourself some feedback here, it's a much easier cognitive battle to win than just trying to be reasonable about, well, let me wait a little longer to check my email. Like you're going to lose that battle, you know, eight times out of 10, which is like enough to, to really overcome it. So that's like a, a hidden bonus of time blocking is now you can really get your arms around separating different cognitively distinct activities. Thank you for tuning in to the Huberman Lab Clips channel. If you enjoyed the clip that you just viewed, please check out the full-length episode by clicking here.